You probably saw my guest today on Broadway in Spider-Man Turn Off the Dark or on TV's Sexy Penny Dreadful. Now he's back playing the iconic Riff Raff in the Fox remake of the Rocky Horror Picture Show. What's up, Reeve Carney? Not much, Paul. How you doing? I'm so good. Thanks for having me on. I've yeah. wanted to be on this show forever, so well, I'm very excited. Well, I mean, you should just ask. I would have had you on a long time ago. Thank you. But I'm glad you're here. I'm glad me you're too. here. And, you're, and you have an exciting TV project to talk about, so it's always yeah. good to, to have something like good and juicy, and a new album, and yeah, all thanks. kinds of stuff happening yeah. for you. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I'm so grateful to have been a part of these projects that have had such a place in you know pop culture and yeah. you know artistic history in some form. Right. So it's a good responsibility. But I guess you know, as Spider-Man says, with great power comes great responsibility. So, <laughs> 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 but no, it's it's been yeah. I feel very fortunate. Okay, so Rocky Horror is obviously. I mean, how many fans are there? At Rocky Horror is there a specific number? I don't know. Bazillions. I, yeah, it's one of those things that just keeps growing because all the generations and people yeah. who. Whatever year you started, uh, you were first introduced to it. Right. You just continue. It seems like it never leaves your bloodstream. Right. So when you get cast as something like Riff Raff, everybody knows exactly who Riff Raff is. I mean, Richard O'Brien, who yeah, created oh gosh. Rocky Horror, he was the Riff Raff yeah. and, uh, originally, and we all know him. Raul Esparza. Uh, I didn't realize Raul did this. Yeah, yeah. He oh was gosh. awesome on Broadway. He I did didn't it on Broadway. Realize that. that was sort of like a big, a big breakout for him. So yeah, you have to hear his album, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah check that one oh, out. Oh, yeah. So, so obviously you walked in with a lot of, did it feel like responsibility? Yeah, certainly. I mean, I think... Um, we had such a supportive group, though. I mean, having Kenny Ortega and yeah. Lou Adler at the helm, and the fact that Tim Curry was, you know, gracious enough to offer his services to Lou and Kenny, saying, "Hey, I want to be a part of this yeah. and come back as the criminologist." Uh, you know, it, it takes the edge off a little bit uh -huh. in terms of the sense of responsibility, just enough so that we could do our jobs. Mm -hmm. You know, I think. But yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's great to have that support, because otherwise it, w it would have it been um, daunting. What was your actual audition like? Did you audition for this? I did, but um, I was actually in Dublin working on season three of Penny Dreadful, right. so they wanted me to come to Los Angeles for a screen test, but I couldn't get out of, obviously, a filming day. Yeah. So thankfully, a self-tape sufficed. Um, I, I did a you bunch made of self-tapes. In, in Dublin? Yeah. Did you use like the Penny Dreadful, Dreadful crew? They offered it. it was yeah. They're so sweet. You could have they had like the most awesome looking audition tape ever. They said they would. It was just so <laughs> nice. But I just did it in my hotel room. But so um, what did you do? You sat in your hotel room uh, with your iPhone and yeah. did what? Uh, well, I like to record the other voices on the iPhone, like the other character voices. and all. It helps me kind of play around with my character and gives me a chance to explore other things. Wait, you did a scene with multiple characters? Yeah, like I mean, I'll record the other voices to listen, it's something I learned from my acting teacher to um, record the other people's lines and then leave spaces for yours, like adequate space. Okay. And then I, you know, deliver my lines in the gaps. But it's a good way to practice. You can do it at different tempos and you know do a fast version of the scene, a slow version of the scene. I mean, you, it's not quite the same as doing it live with another actor, but it's good for practice. And right. so I did that, and then I filmed myself on the on the uh, my Mac. <laughs> and what were you singing? What, what, what scene oh. did you do? I do you have this? Do you, is the video still on your phone? I, it's not on my phone, but it's on my computer. It's on your computer? Yeah. Did you bring a laptop? No. No. I <laughs> didn't bring But I sang <laughs> the, the three songs that Riff Raff sings, I sang those. It was an intense oh, audition. Wow, okay. Pretty much everything that I do, except for the physical comedy stuff, which was a blast yeah. to get to be a part of that. But um, all of the actual dialogue and singing, I, I, I had to put on the audition tape. And what were you wearing? My just, agent you, you actually, <laughs> it was partially me in a way, but my agent said, where'd you get that bra? It wasn't actually a bra. It was actually just a ripped up t-shirt that's been in the wash so many times that it, it had ripped in a way that looked like I was wearing a white sort of mesh bra. So, and then I had like a sort of tuxedo coat on and I wrapped something around one of my hands to make it look like one of Riff Raff's gloves. <laughs> so you were doing it. You were I doing wanted it. to go, yeah. yeah. You did your own little at-home version yeah. of Rocky Horror. And you got it. Yeah, I know. And like it was good. It worked. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so thankful. It was just, I mean, I had, I've had, I've been so blessed with the opportunities I've had. And, you know, the community, being a part of the Broadway community, yeah. it's, there's nothing like it. There, it's really true. Like, coming back here, there's nothing like it. And I, I honestly can't wait till I, I hope that I'm, you know, blessed with the opportunity to come back again to Broadway, but yeah. I had so much fun. What I was going to say is, I, I don't know that I've ever had m more fun on a job than on Rocky Horror, simply because of the nature of uh, the character I got to play mm -hmm. and the way that Kenny Ortega brings people together. And just it was just a big party. We were all on night shoots the entire time, which works well for me coming from the rock and roll world. So <laughs> I was quite comfortable. So you slept with all it. day and then got up. And yeah, I was like, oh, this is just night. my normal schedule. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> so where did you film it? Uh, in Toronto. Okay. 
at a castle called Casa Loma, wow. which is apparently the largest castle in North America. What is it normally used for, like creepy wedding rentals? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there we went. Yeah, you know, we were in, like going to see it for the first time. There was a wedding going on. Okay. So right. <laughs> it's such a cool cast because everyone sort of comes from different worlds. Yeah. And it's so great that way. Oh yeah, the cast is amazing. I mean, did you know anyone going I, into it? I knew Christina Millian from okay. uh, our teenage years. We had we ran in sort of the same circles and had a oh, lot really? of mutual friends in Los Angeles because I grew up here in New York. Yeah. But went to high school in Los Angeles okay. and so I met her around the age of 13 or 14 oh, wow. and uh, but we never worked together but uh, yeah it was just uh, an incredible group of people we made such I really feel lasting friendships in such a short amount of time did you guys have to like bond immediately so, oh like, yeah tell me about when you first you're asking really that. good questions not that I'm surprised but you're asking really interesting <laughs> questions but I think um, one thing that uh, Kenny wanted us to do because he comes from the theater world obviously and the yeah. rock and roll world too but he was in uh, one of I think the first national tour of hair very right. early on uh, uh, one of the productions of hair I'm trying to remember which one it was but he wanted us to get as he called it in the soup in the soup yeah okay. well Is Alex that a hot tub up at the castle it, what's the soup it was this, I guess more of an air sort of s soup but he wanted us to just get together um, and thankfully because of my experiences on Penny Dreadful I was maybe a little bit more comfortable than I otherwise would have been. So uh, we all just got together. Being naked? We, like, well, what? yeah. I mean, what? we actually had our clothes on for this, but <laughs> it was just kind of like one, a bunch of snakes moving together, dancing and not literally the cast. The cast, you yeah. All were we a bunch all of were snakes. as if we were a bunch of snakes dancing together, moving and touching, and he just Where'd wanted us to get comfortable in the dance studio. Oh, okay. So it was just sort of like a bonding. Yeah. Sounds like the first first day of rehearsals for cats, where they all had to crawl on like cats. But you guys yeah. were snakes. Yeah. You all had to like sort of. And he probably uh, he crawl on top of each other. And I, yeah, a bit of crawling, whatever wow, you wanted is to there do. Any video of that? Probably is. <laughs> I think there is. And he wanted like a lot of eye contact too. Oh, okay. Yeah, really yeah. yeah, it was it was a good challenge. I mean, so it gets how long you did you just crawl on top of each other when you start running the songs? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I, yeah, I think we start. He's like, okay, we're done. Let's, uh, but I think it was probably ten minutes wow. of that, and then we went into the proper dance rehearsals. Wow, I love it. <laughs> I don't know. It, it was it was cool. It was good good way to get comfortable with people quickly. So <laughs> did you already know this this music and this show and this script going into it? Was mm -hmm. it pretty easy to like learn? Yeah, in a way, the dance moves were probably the hardest thing for me yeah. to learn because that's not a huge part of my background. Even being on Broadway, I mainly was flying, not dancing. Right, so right. I mean, I didn't really, uh, you know, I've done some sort yeah, there was of no dream ballet in Spider Man. No, they tried to put a waltz in at one point, and really? I don't know if it was my fault that they <laughs> cut they that. were like, we <laughs> not do the waltz. Yeah, but Jen and I were doing it, and, and I don't know. At some point, they're like, eh, no, nah, we'll I don't it. know if a waltz. And I know she work. can, she does it well, so I don't. <laughs> but yeah, I, I eventually did do a Viennese waltz in Penny Dreadful, which was uh, yeah challenging. But yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's just not my every not something I do every day dancing. Yeah. How long did you actually have to film Rocky Horror? I think we only had. Uh, 28 days, 30 days, wow, something okay. like that. And But we did have at least four or five weeks of rehearsal, okay. which was really helpful. Wow. And um, time to record the songs, because obviously we're doing this a little differently than uh, Grease Live or Sound of Music or yeah. different. Would you have done it if it was live? I, I would have done, done it, but I would have been more frightened, I think, uh, to uh -huh. do this live. Yeah. With those heels doing the time warp, that would have been challenging, I think, for me. Yeah. What was uh, Laverne Cox like? I've never oh, met she's Cox. wonderful. I want to. I love oh, Laverne. you gotta meet her. Yeah, she's s just a ball of just electricity. Yeah. And showing up every day, she was just uh, bringing it. I mean, for real. Okay, let's let's just do a little rewind on Spider Man. What is it like now, looking back on that whole time in your life? It was oh, yeah. a three year. Just the actual show run was a three year chunk. Yeah. You were involved for it like a couple years before yeah. that, right? I mean. Yeah. What is it like now, now that you have distance from it, now that you've recovered, maybe? <laughs> <or> <laughs> yeah, the, for, thankfully for me, the worst thing that happened was like shin splints, which went away after they took that treadmill away. If you remember in the original version, I uh, sang Boy Falls from the Sky, I guess my 11 o'clock number or whatever. Yes. <laughs> I sang that while like running on a treadmill. It was your 11 o'clock number. It was beautiful, I, actually. Thanks. It was a beautiful number. Yeah. Thanks. And you did it on a treadmill. And that was the challenge. That's what gave me the shin splints. But then they took that out. Which I think made the ending of the song or the button slightly less climactic because uh -huh, I yeah. didn't I didn't have the running to do. <laughs> right. so I had to find new ways. I remember Phil McKinley had us had me do this punch in the air, which I don't know if <laughs> when I in doubt, just yeah punch just the air. do it yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but I think it worked. Yeah, I can't e I I can't even keep track 
of the history of Spider-Man anymore. It's all such a blur to me. Yeah. You know, all the different versions and, and that preview period and, and all the horrible accidents and just and Julie Taymor coming and going. And yeah. That, just the whole thing is such a blur to me. Can you even keep it, track of it? There are things that I <laughs> I think may I, I may have missed. Um, I'm grateful for, I don't know, some people have mixed feelings, obviously being inside and outside of the show, but I'm grateful for Glenn Berger's book because there are certain things, if nothing else. His, his book, his nonfiction book that he wrote. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah Song of Spider-Man. I read it, yeah. It, yeah, me too. And I, I thought some things I, I remember differently than that, uh -huh. but I found it, it's, it, I think it's great that someone did that because for me what it does is it triggers all of my memories. Yeah. And I think it does that with everyone else and helps me to take me back to that place, which um, was of course a challenging time, but it, one of the best and most rewarding experiences of my life. So yeah, now years from now, you're, when your grandkids ask you, you can just hand them that book. That's why I took the like, job. Read the book. Yeah, that's w yeah exactly. <laughs> well, that's why I took the job because I thought to myself at the time, I was coming from the rock and roll music world and maybe had like a, I don't know, I just had this feeling like, oh, I don't know if I don't know if theater is something I necessarily want to do or even acting, to be honest yeah. with you, at that point. So I took the job really because I thought to myself, okay, when I'm 80 years old and uh, I'm talking to my grandkids, w will I be able to, like, how will I feel if I tell them that I was offered the role, I was offered the chance to right. be Spider-Man and I turned it down? Right. It, it's not a good, no, nah, I got to take this, I got to do it. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm yeah. really glad I did. But there must have been periods of time where it was tough to keep going. You were yeah. there so long. Yeah. I remember I, I kept thinking like, wow, Reeves still there. He's still doing this. I, yeah, I think for me, one thing that was helpful, I, I think you, you, uh, it's always helpful in life to approach things from a point of gratitude. Uh -huh. And I think I just felt grateful. I mean, I felt like, uh, you know, I came from the rock and roll world, w which I love, and I still do that. And I'm, I'm starting to tour more often now that yeah. I have some breaks. But uh, yeah, I, you know, being on the road, living in a van basically and staying in like sort of dingier motels and things like that, I, you know, I had a job and I, I get to perform in an artistic way. So yeah. I, I was really grateful for that. How much actual flying did you do in that show? I, th I would say it's probably like between 30 and 40% okay. of the Spider-Man flying, but Chris Tierney did yeah. probably, I'd say f close to 50%. Wow. And then there were a bunch of other guys doing all kinds of flying. Chris Tierney, who of course hurt himself. Yeah, that, Chris Tierney, yeah. That who, horrible accident. Yeah, the one that people are most familiar with. But he's great now. Yeah, he, well, the funny thing about the show, I think we even made jokes about this before he came back, saying like, you know, I think uh, we made a fake uh, David Letterman top 10 list, saying the top 10 uh, good reasons, er, top 10 positive things about Spider-Man uh, not opening uh, yet. Uh, one of them, I think the number one was that Chris Tierney will be back in the show by the time we open, and he actually was. <laughs> That's <laughs> how long like, it took to open. My gosh. <laughs> it's crazy. It's so crazy. And then, of course, you did Penny Dreadful, right? Yeah. Which was a huge success for you. And yeah. And you got to do all kinds of sexy, creepy things. On yeah. There. Yeah, was that, was that, was that, and you knew that going in. I remember when you first knew, got the job, yeah. you were like, well, they already I know. told me I'm going to have to be naked. Didn't they already say, mm -hmm. like, you knew you were going into that. I was a little nervous. That that was the first thing that made me, well, the only thing, I guess, that made me afraid to take on that role. But it's great. I mean, it's like jumping into uh, a pool of cold water. At first, it's it's maybe Hopefully scary. Hopefully not too but cold if you're yeah, naked. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't know exactly. if that's you want to think about <laughs> it. But what's interesting is that you, so now you're doing Riff Rap. All your credits are cool. Like you, you do all these, like you went from Spider-Man to Dorian Gray in this like beautiful TV show, to riff rap. It's like, I'm just wanting you to do something like, I'm wondering when you're gonna do something that's so not cool. <laughs> and you're such a cool guy, you have this whole rock and roll vibe about you. Thanks. And I'm like, is he always, is he, is he gonna be able to have a whole career of just doing like these super cool things? <laughs> or is he at some point just gonna have to do something like really stupid? <laughs> hey, I'm sure I'll, I'll, I'll feel, I'll make the best of whatever. No, I think that's nice of you to say. Um, yeah, I feel very grateful to have being able to be a part of these things. I mean, I, I don't know, uh, I don't really know what's next, really. Now I'm just right. focusing on music at the, at the moment until and auditioning and things like that. Yeah. But thanks. I so when you talk about, like, returning to Broadway, it immediately makes me think, well, a lot of things on Broadway are pretty, like, kind of dorky and... I don't know. Would you do, yeah. would you do like, a, a, a classic kind of Broadway musical thing? I think I would, yeah. yeah. I think I'd only want to do a revival of something if it were different enough in some way that I felt that yeah. you wouldn't necessarily be compared to someone who just blew it out of the park, you know. I think yeah. um, these classics, they had such incredible actors in them and performers that, you, you know, you want to be able to bring something fresh. Right. And I think if there's the freedom to do that, then... Uh, and I, I'd also love to do a play. I've never done a play. Mm. That'd be that'd be great. I've never yeah. done a play. Cool. I'm into yeah. that. Yeah, you should do that. That'd be cool. And you grew up in New York City, 
So yeah. and you you spent like mo like until you were like a teenager, right, in New York yeah, City? Yeah, uh, yeah, basically. I, I auditioned for LaGuardia. I got into that school for guitar, and then I ended up moving to Los Angeles, where I went to a similar high school um, w uh, called Hamilton Academy of Music, which mm. was an incredible school. And in fact, I'm still working with a lot of the people that I went to school with I in different forms. Like for my album cover. Um, my friend Timothy Garrett, who directed our uh, music video for Love Me, Chase Me, he's doing the design, the artwork and everything, oh, and he cool. took some photos for me as well. But uh, So yeah, we have a, a, an incredible community of artists through some of the schools I've gone to. You told Susan Blackwell you talked about your love of cats. Have you revisited cats? Um, you I were saw wondering it. if you would still like cats. Yeah, you know what, I actually saw it in London. I went to oh, see the, London, the one that right. I think is coming here, right? Is that the it's one? It's here. It's here now. It's here. It just when did it? When did it? After this. When did it get here? It's a little while ago. Okay, okay. Yeah, it's here. I've been I've been out of town, but it's here. But You've I did busy. see it, and um, I you honestly I think it Victoria? affected me musically. Oh yeah, Victoria, my favorite. Yeah. Yeah. Victoria. The white cat. The white yeah. Oh my gosh. I don't know what it was, but um, something about that cat. Yeah. But um, but I <laughs> is she similar to the kind of girls you date now, Victoria the White Cat? Is that sort know. of like the prototype? Did that sort of lay it out for you? I, I have to reinvestigate <laughs> the personality of Victoria the White Cat. Maybe she I just dances really pretty. But I think uh, no, the music. I was gonna say. Yeah. I think that I found it to. I think it's influenced me in a lot of ways that I wasn't even aware. I mean, the lyrics are a bit abstract at times, yes. and well, they're I sometimes poetry. wonder if they were. If some of the uh, production was maybe under the influence of something other than coffee, I don't know. I have wondered this. Yeah, like maybe T.S. Eliot. Maybe because I was he thinking wrote some of those poems. I don't yeah. know what he smoked. But yeah, you're, you're, you're thinking maybe cats came out of a cloud of something. Yeah, maybe. I don't, but I mean, the, but the it's a strong theory. The music itself, I've found. I think it's ingrained in my musical DNA or something. I I, I lo love the. Uh, just abstract nature of that. Wait, music. I just figured out your next job. What? They're making a movie of cats, and you could be the Rum Tum Tugger. I love that part. Really? They're making I a movie? I just figured out your next. But yes. I have to be able to dance Tom well. Tom Hooper, who did Les Mis. Oh, really? Yeah, call your agent. All right. Hey, but don't I have cool to be able job. to dance really well for that? Yeah, Maybe they could get a stunt double. It's not going to be live. You'll be all right. All right. <laughs> Thanks. You know what? <laughs> Hey, I, I owe you if, if, if that <laughs> happens. <laughs> Tell me about your new album. You have a new album coming yeah. out like soon, in a couple of weeks. Yeah. What's I, the know, release date? October 21st is when I... I, I want to have it out in time for the, the Rocky, Rocky Horror Horror audience. Rocky the 20th. Yeah. October 20th, and you're going to bring it out the same week. Yeah, just because I, I wanted people who maybe discover me for the first time to yeah. be able to hear it, because it's something totally. I put my heart and soul into, and uh, songs that I've spent a lot of time on and spent a lot of time with. Um, You've been writing this for years. Yes, yeah, some of it. I mean, it, the, some of the songs are, are songs that I uh, have wanted to put on albums with my band Carney, and mm -hmm. we hadn't gotten around to it. And this is my first solo studio record. Um, actually, I played everything on it. This is kind of cool, actually, because it's because of Spider-Man that I was able to do this, because I had an apartment here in New York, and I built a recording studio in that apartment. Oh, wow. And based on, you know, in between shows, on two show days, you know, I'd have maybe two or three hours in between the shows, and then after the show, I'd work for two or three hours. So I'd never have like a full 12 hour session where I could work, so it made no sense to go to a studio. So I ended up building it in my apartment so I could record in my downtime from Spider Man. You're saying like in between shows, when other people were just sleeping, you were going and recording songs. Yeah. It's amazing. And so that's, that's where I'm, that's how amazing. I made the album. Was that, was, that, was that like a good time? You were like kind of like jacked up from doing yeah. the show and then you were like recording? And yeah. That's cool. And especially after the second show, I found I had the most energy because it was hard for me to fall asleep. Yeah. Yeah, you stayed up all night recording. And I built the, all these things. I built this uh, isolation cabinet in my apartment so I could play electric guitars like almost like as loud as Jimi Hendrix in my apartment without it bothering anyone. Put oh the headphones God. on and it's pretty cool. Never, nobody banging on your door. No, the door. only time I ever got a knock on my door was when I was playing kick drum. <laughs> that was uh, <laughs> problematic. The rest of the drums they were okay with though. I never had anybody knocking. Let's see it. <laughs> What's the album called? Um. I Reed think I've just period, decided today. Like Adina Menzel's album, Adina period. No, what? I think I literally just decided today, but it could still change. But um, youth oh. is. I'm still working on the cover. I'm almost done with it. But uh, youth is wasted, which oh. is a title of one of the tracks. Youth is wasted. I can't wait to hear it. And, and it, but it's kind of thank you. It's it's like it's not. I, I don't mean that to sound negative because it's, it's sort of more re referring to and alluding to the youth 
of the moment or the youth of anything and sort of uh, the fact that it doesn't have to be that way. We don't have to waste that youth of something uh, being present. It's kind of about being present. Cool. I love it. And Thanks. you're going on like a tour. Yeah, I just came you off one um, sort yeah, of a northern trail. Yeah, you did like a summer tour, and now you're doing a fall tour. Yeah, fall and tour. I, and I saw you going like really cool cities. Yeah. You're starting in L.A. This, I'm starting in L.A. And for where you're starting is a place you have a history with. Yeah, Molly Malone's, which yeah. is where I... So you, thank you for doing all this research. It's so kind. <laughs> I don't but know what your history of it exactly is. You have a live yeah, album from there. I know I that. I do, yeah. I, well, I played there for about a year and a half straight every Monday night with my band okay. from 2005 to 2007 or eight. Before I knew you. Uh, yeah. Back then. Be before I came to Broadway, exactly. Right. So I did that, and so I, I thought it would be a fun thing to go back there, and especially for some people who may have wanted to see those shows and didn't find out about me until, you know, years later. Yeah. So that's why I wanted to do it there. And then, yeah, ac across the southern route, like through Texas and Georgia and um, all of that. Okay, so how can everyone, they can go on your website yeah. and find out. Um, and also, com. like, I use the social media stuff a lot, like Instagram, Twitter, Yeah, you're good Facebook. at social media. Thanks. All that Snapchat I'm probably better at that than my website. Shit. I mean, what were you doing with all oh, that? Oh, gosh, yeah. People I just get it. lost in, those, in the spiral of those filter, of those, right? I just had this uh, idea to start double frying, so to speak, with the filters, and it's working. I want to try to do a long chain where like you put one filter on your face, then you can put a different filter with like the dog ears on that filtered face from the other person's wow. phone. Then if you could, you could get it around again. I, I'm just curious <laughs> to see this. I've done a you couple. You want to see how many layers you can yeah. have? Yeah. Wow. I don't know. It'd be kind of fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I, I look forward to all of it. And, Thanks. And I'm so excited to get to see you again. And you look you sharp too. as always. I, love, I always love your look. Thanks. What do you call your look? I don't what know. What is this? It's a little <laughs> retro. It's yeah. Nice. Thank you. I got this at a place called Play Clothes in Burbank in Los Angeles. Uh, and yeah, it's like a 1950s, I don't know what you call it, but D.L. Cerny downtown sells things like this. I, I actually might stop by there today, see if I can get something like it. You always have, like, whenever I see you out anywhere, you always have, like, a great outfit. And Thanks. I'm always like, where did he get that? Like, I you, think you're the trick is the suspenders, because sometimes yeah, I wear just, like, a T-shirt. But if you wear this, you can kind of, I never know where I'm going to be at the end of the night. So I, I don't mean that in a weird way. I just mean like, <laughs> like you know, if someone calls you, you live in New York. It's like, oh yeah, come out to this bar or whatever. And you're like, oh, I'm not dressed appropriately. But if you get the suspenders. You always have, you're always rocking the suspenders just in case. Yeah. Wow, interesting. And it does keep my pants up sometimes. <laughs> 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 Thank you, Reeve. It's so good to see you. I'm so thrilled you for too. everything. Thanks. So Rocky Horror Picture Show is on Fox on the 20th. Yeah. And your album's probably coming out on the 21st. Yep. And then they can yeah. go see you live, and there's all sorts of concert dates and crazy Snapchat filtering and <laughs> all kinds of things happening. Thank you for being here. Thanks, Paul. Good to see Thank you. you. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.